there's so many individuals in this country that are like unbanked. And now this thing becomes not only an individual's digital identity, but the opportunity to become a digital wallet where transactions can be made and they can use their phone because this is the thing they actually do have. And now this becomes and this makes them banked and how Bitcoin is a part of that. And you take that for granted when you're in the U.S., right? Yeah. Like this stuff really matters everywhere else but the U.S. And like why Bitcoin is so important, just like it's unpacked my eyes in a really big way. And I'm like a lot of gratitude. Like we're fully yearning community. Like it's and we want to be closer to other people and we need apps that bring us closer, not put us further away. That's how you build a network state is like first you build a community with a native cryptocurrency. You build rules, you build ideals, you build values into that set. And our native cryptocurrency happens to be Bitcoin. And then from there, you can crowdsource territory and build your own city. You guys have like gone two steps ahead with that and kind of building El Zonte over here. We are live here from Bitcoin Beach with Justin Rizvani from Zion, right? I yeah. got that right. So uh, he is going to convince me today that I, I need to add another platform to the plethora <laughs> of things I'm trying to keep up with. But before we get into that and uh, he tells us about his company, we're just going to get his impressions of El Salvador. Uh, it's your first time here, right? First time here. It's been quite cool. I mean... The, the amount of like Bitcoin energy since I landed is very interesting. Like in the airport, Chivo wallet stuff everywhere. Um, you got to pay $12 to get in. Did you, did you pay in Bitcoin? I tried. You tried. Well, there was an issue with the... <laughs> with which, the Chivo wallet? Yes. There, there was, <laughs> I guess there was like full disclosure, there was like an internet issue. Okay. And my attempt was to pay with Zion because Zion's a full lightning wallet. So I was like, oh, this is a cool example. I was going to have a guy get a video of it, like, <laughs> but it just didn't work. So I paid cash. Um, now, if you didn't like, have the video guy there, it probably would have worked because that's how, how it always is. If you're, trying, even, if, you, if you're trying to capture it. it oh, uh, no, no. Yeah. There wasn't even a video guy. It was more like I would probably like had another camera or something. Just kind of made it up. I don't know. It, was, it would have been very cool. But the amount of seeing Bitcoin signs everywhere. And I think that's very cool. I think like the idea that Bitcoin to be part of overall GDP as a strategy, I think is very unique and interesting. Also, the surf's been great. Like I surf a lot and I've been in the water twice a day, every day. I've gotten quite dark. I mean, the point break is sick. And the water's so warm. It's, a that's it's a so warm. Yeah. It's a great like little right. And it was awesome. It's been an awesome few days. Dinner's been great. We have an amazing people here the whole time. Like, it's a cool place. You guys are staying at Garten, right? We're staying at Garten. Bo is amazing. Yeah. Like, shout out to Bo. I guess if, you, if you're coming to El Zonte, stay at Garten. There's no, like, it's amazing. Like, it feels like a resort. Like, yeah. very nobody ever, Nobody ever has any complaints when they're staying like, there. Like, the quality is just like a very, very top, top notch place. And um, I was a little bit nervous coming here, though. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, my parents are freaked out that I'm here. And when I FaceTime them, they're like, oh, my God, thank you. You're OK. We were so worried about you. And I understand because there's a bit of like a PR issue about like this play, this place being like dangerous and not going to lie. I'm like was nervous. I'm still a little bit nervous. Like we went to the you're Capitol. Still, you're still nervous. I mean, we went to the Capitol today and I was a little nervous the whole time. I'm like, what am I getting into? Like, where am I going? Like it, it felt a little bit like. There isn't a lot of control here and it's a little bit open. And so yeah, just my personal experience, but I yeah. feel good. Like I'm good. Like you've been so kind. Everyone's been so kind to us. So gratitude. Well, it's it's funny even how we met. And that's what I love about being here in Azante. I was, you know, just chilling on my uh, upstairs porch with with another Bitcoiner I had just met that day. And uh, you and uh, Breedlove come rolling up with Shimbera, you know, out of nowhere. And that's I mean, that kind of thing happens all the time here. It's like being at a Bitcoin conference. You feel like you're always meeting people doing interesting things. And that's why I love being here in El Zante so much. Yeah, it was a, it was a great like conversation. And it was and I went and surfed with him this morning and it was like pretty like it was great. It was like a fun little couple of days. 
versus your prior conceptions of what it would like look like in the country here, the level of poverty or the level of development, what do you think? <laughs> Has that matched your expectations? Is I it more developed than you thought? Is it less? I think that it's exactly probably what I expected infrastructure wise. Um, I had a little bit like, I was like, oh, this place is going to be like Costa Rica. It's definitely not like Costa Rica. Like there isn't a lot of stuff here. There aren't a lot of like, at least in this place, like not like a lot of things. You're here for the people, the surf and some couple of things to do. There isn't like, I think I was maybe thinking there'd be more infrastructure, a little bit more. Cause like hearing about the perception of Bitcoin Beach, like there's a lot, like there's so much here and all. And I'm not saying I mean, it's a that. small, yeah, it's a small town. But, I think but, sometimes people think it's going to be a city. I thought this was going to be a city. Yeah. Like there was like, but I was like, oh, this is like a really cool small town. And you mentioned it on our car ride, like 3000 people yeah. and probably 50% of those are, are more locals, right? Yeah. So you have probably at any one time, you it, there's probably 3000 people that actually live here. And then there's always an influx of, of tourists. So there's probably usually another couple thousand tourists at, at any at any time. Most of them actually Salvadorans that come from the capital city, yeah. but a lot of international tourists, too, especially Bitcoiners, obviously. Yeah. And it was kind of cool to start off the week at a Bitcoin event, which was thrown by Max and Stacey. I thought that was like a cool like, oh, there's a lot of Bitcoiners here. It's crazy to me that people, I mean, there's tons of people that flew in just for that one event. Um, yeah. That's that, the kind of draw they have. That, yeah. There's there's this idea, like this, like pilgrimage energy to come to this place. Yeah. And I kind of was like, I was like, okay, cool. This like, let's go do this. And it's just been fascinating to learn about the culture and how people think about Bitcoin here. Cause it's a little bit different. It feels like dive into that a little bit what what would you say you you've picked up on how you see it differently because i i have my it's, views it's, with that it's so. somewhat a part of the culture now yeah and no other place has it as a part of culture like you don't go to miami and talk about bitcoin you go to miami yeah. and you see the city like it's not that like this is part of potentially raising poverty people out of poverty in fact um you know i had a meeting today with someone in the government and we went into san salvador and one of the things we were unpacking was that there's so many individuals in this country that are like unbanked and they're unbanked because they don't have property they don't have addresses they can tie to a bank account and now this thing becomes not only an individual's digital identity but the opportunity to become a digital wallet where transactions can be made and they can use their phone because this is the thing they actually do have and now this becomes and this makes them banked this allows like potentially like remittances to actually come across the border in a more efficient way. And this device is the way to do it and how Bitcoin is a part of that. And you take that for granted when you're in the U.S., right? Like yeah. we don't like no, I've never had the conversation with anyone in the U.S. about remittances. It's like it's not a, I, I would say most of my friends don't even know what they are. Yeah. Like They don't even know what a remittance is. And then the thing I come here and I'm, I'm meeting with someone in the government and it's like that's one of the main things that they want to talk about and think about that problem and like wow this is like this stuff really matters everywhere else but the u.s and like why bitcoin is so important just like it's unpacked my eyes in a really big way and i'm like a lot of gratitude i think one thing's funny for bitcoiners when they come here they see you know a lot of the locals with bitcoin stickers on their motorcycle or wearing shirts or hats. And I think a lot of Bitcoiners in the US are afraid to ever have any Bitcoin signs on them because they think it'll make them a target. But in El Salvador, because of the way Bitcoin started being used here, it's almost viewed as the money of the poor. And so nobody would think putting a, a Bitcoin sticker on their motorcycle would make them a target. And but it's just a totally different mindset because most of the people who use that, you know, are people that are making a few hundred dollars, uh, you know, a month. That's the economic level that they're at versus in the U.S. You always think of people, you know, driving, you know, the the meme of the the Lambos and that sort of thing. So it's sure. a very, very different here. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I definitely am feeling that energy for sure. Have you um, have you spent any Bitcoin here? Have you used it anywhere? Um, have I spent Bitcoin here? Um, no, I think mostly because we haven't left the hotel <laughs> and we were like, we haven't left our little, <laughs> we haven't left our All right. You got to get yeah. out there and, uh, you know, I throw know, some sats around. I mean, I would love to, and particularly I'd love to use the Zion wallet to do that. I, uh, I just, honestly, we haven't, we haven't left our little bubble. Yeah. I mean, I've basically been 
surfing in meetings or working or eating like that's been the main and we've had a lot of meetings while we've been here we've met with a bunch of people there's people that are staying in our hotel that like i'm working with in different ways like it's just been a very a very cool week i think for a lot of learning so what is and and if it's if you can't go into it that's fine but but if you want to share like why are you here like what was the purpose was it for these meetings are you do you have a vision for zion in el salvador of how it might I be think, used i think after what's transpired this week i think there'll be a massive i think we'll have a massive support for this country um it was a lot of things were inspired why i originally came here was robert was was we were, we were gonna hang out in miami and he's like hey you want to go to el salvador and i'm like fuck like i haven't been yet if I want to go down, I'd like to go with a buddy that I know that I'm like close with that I trust. I was like, you know, Max and Stacey are having this event. They want us to come down. Like, let's go. Let's go for a couple of days and see how it is. And uh, there was and then when I said yes, like 10 other things happened. Then we're like, oh, we're having this meeting and now we're going to have this person. Then we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And then it turned into a whole week of just like figuring out some new things to do. Um, that was the original intention. It's like, let me just go see what this place is. And I have never visited El Salvador. I had this like fear around this country. I was like, oh, I'm going to get like murdered or something out here. Like I was nervous. I was like really nervous about coming out here. Uh, I, I always joke around when, with people when they're afraid. I said, don't worry. My daughter will show you around. She'll, she'll, she'll protect you. And, uh, <laughs> no, just having my kids grow up here. I have a very different view of, you know, of El Salvador versus people that just watch the news and, and of course that way. So, and, and I can see that there's probably areas that are worse than others. Yeah. Like any city, like I grew up in LA, there's places I'd never go in LA. There's places that I would never visit. Like you just won't do that. And I'm sure that's the same in, in any country. Um, but I think the, the thing, like the energy I also feel is like opportunity, right? Like, like there is really an opportunity here. I think because like, it's such an emerging market, an emerging market GDP. Like GDP is not that high in this place. No. Like I think, what's the GDP in El Salvador? I think it's like thirty-one billion a year. I mean, it's like a rounding error of a of a U.S. you know spending bill. It's a rounding error of a U.S. spending bill, and it's like a what is it? Maybe a third of Elon Musk's net worth is the GDP of an entire yeah. country. Just to put in context, right? Like. We were talking about that today in our meeting and I was like, whoa, 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 no, no. Do you mean like trillion? Like, are you saying like the word trillion or you're saying 30 billion? Like, yeah, 30 billion. And I'm like, that's like, it, it's just, it's, that's 50% of Google's revenue in one year. Just to put context on yeah. things, right? And I look at that and I'm like, man, like that's really an opportunity in this country. If like you can actually build something and like do something different. And the why, the thing that opened my eyes is this like concept of being unbanked. And like truly an individual, like it's not that they're just unbanked. They're also like unidentified in some ways. Like, like there is no like identity service for some people. And like the concept of you having a digital identity that is also tied to a wallet that allows you to have an identification of like, this is who I am. These are the things that I like want to pay for. And there, there isn't that thing here. We take this for granted yeah. in the U.S. We take it like I don't think we really understand how good we have it. When you come to somewhere like this, like my whole perspective has changed on a lot of stuff. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand just because of the KYC and AML rules. A lot of companies like Venmo um, don't come into El Salvador because the compliance costs are so high that it's not worth it to them. They're not going to make enough money. So you have most of the world doesn't have access to basic banking apps that we take for granted. And that's why Bitcoin is so crucial because it upends that. You don't have to you know, go through that KYC AML process that's costly. The yeah. reason that, that people are unbanked, most of them, it's not because they can't be banked, it's because it's not profitable for the banks to bring them on as customers. Sure. So they just don't want them. Yeah. But with Bitcoin and anybody being able to come in without there being any gatekeepers, sure. it, it really flips that on its head. And I think the, the amazing thing to me is like this eye opening interoperability efficiency of money. I think like to me, that's a very beautiful process is like, wow, like we're actually using a thing that doesn't have any borders. Right. Like and I don't think that we've ever really experienced an asset like that. Right. Like the ability no. that like like the borders are this other ethereal plane, which is the digital universe. It's not the physical world. The fiat currency is bound by the physical world. 
It's bound by actual physical borders. And when things move across those physical borders, there's, an, there's a system that allows that to go. But Bitcoin lives on a layer above the ethereal physical plane. So it allows this money to be interoperable and it unpacks a whole different thing. Like Bitcoin's a different dimension of money. Like when you really think about yeah. it, like, like we're playing at a whole different like digital dimension. And I think what I'm realizing also here is like people have more access to digital experiences than they do to physical ones. They may not have a house, but they have a cell phone, which means that they're more tapped into the digital world than they are the physical world in some aspects. And that's another thing I think Americans underestimate is, is how much proliferation of smartphones there is, even in countries that are, that are very poor, where the vast majority of people in El Salvador do have smartphones. People will get outdated information talking about, oh, only 30% have internet. They're talking about having hardline, high-speed internet to their house. They've Almost skipped. everybody has it on their phone. Everyone's kind of like, I think what you've seen in emerging markets is like this skip over, where it's like, we didn't even have the landline thing. We just skipped straight yeah. to wireless, straight to this like digital experience. And often like we're living more in those lives than we are the physical ones. Yeah. This alternative reality per se. So I want you to convince me about the need for something like Zion. As we were talking earlier, I, I feel like I'm on way too many platforms already. I spend half my time trying to figure out which message came from which, and I want to get less platforms, not more. Yeah. So, but I, I do like the, the spam filtering potential of requiring people to, to pay to interact, at least on first interactions. And so tell me about Zion and, and explain it to me like I'm, uh, well, not even like I'm a third grader because they're probably more tech savvy than me. So explain it to me like I'm a, a 50 year old because uh, I, I almost am. <laughs> I think the first, the first thing you have to do is we have to take a bit of a step back. And just like Bitcoin fixes a lot of things, we have to look at like, how does the internet actually work when it comes to digital applications? And so I think fundamentally, and this has been my thesis for a long time, there's three things that are broken on the web. One is digital identity is broken. And what I mean by it being broken is that it's highly centralized and controlled by individual corporations, uh, mostly like Google and Microsoft, which is your Gmail account is often your identity for hundreds of applications you log into. That's for 1.5 billion people, actually. That's the first problem where I think like, okay, you got to fix identity. That's the first piece. And, but, and, and what do you view as the problem with that? Just because it's centrally controlled? It's, I think it's centrally controlled. It can be turned off at any time. You have no ownership rights of anything happened. Your data is completely owned by another individual. You have no retention of who you are on the web and you can effectively disappear at any time. We know this because the standing president of the United States at some point was ripped off the face of the internet and his identity was gone digitally and he was the president of the yeah. united states like that's like look regardless of your politics no that's, you have to that's like, insane get, like like it just you insane. have to wake up that when you like that was the canary in the coal mine to realize your digital identity is not owned by you yeah so you have to wake up to that fact so i think that system is broken the next piece is how is data and messaging and the movement of data packets on the internet done again highly centralized highly controlled highly done by walled gardens so that's a problem. The final piece and the most important piece is the money. The money on the web is completely broken, right? Like if you look at a direct support platform, which is like how you can pay another individual, there's like five companies in between those transactions that make it happen. You have like a bank, the credit card, the credit card processor, the credit card processing website, the hosting site for the credit card, like all the yeah. companies required to move money on the internet, highly, highly inefficient. And they all take a piece of that transaction. They all take a piece and they all have access to your data. That and they, everything. That they, they leak. Like they, and yeah. yeah, because they store it. The yeah. problem is if data is stored, it will be exposed at some point. Yeah. That's just facts. So it, that's the setup, right? Like, let's look at those three problems. And because I'd been in the creator business for almost 10 years, I'd sold my first company in 2016 and it was like really supporting creators on Instagram. I said to myself, 
what does the future look like if you're trying to solve these three issues? Um, what a future looks like is that the individual on the, the service or the protocol must retain ownership of their identity. If they were to move a message within this ecosystem, they should have the ability to retain all their own data and the ability to move a message should be done in a decentralized way. And the final piece is that there should be peer governed money that would be able to move between two individuals with no one in the middle. Money moving through a protocol, not an individual corporation. Those are the primitives that I said like have to be built. And what we ended up uncovering was there actually wasn't a company solving all three of those problems. So I originally, when I started this whole thing, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take some investment out of my family office and I wanna invest in a company that's building a product revolving around money. Like I wanted to build a social network product for creators that's built on top of money, built on top of Bitcoin particularly, more importantly, the Bitcoin Lightning Network. At the time and still today, I could not find a money, an app that was built on top of money. So I said to myself, you know what? I got to go build an app like this. I got to go figure out a way. So what we've done and what we've unpacked. And, and sorry, can you explain to me what you mean by built on, on top of money? I think I think I know what you're talking about, but just to, to make that sure we're on the money, same page. That, that Bitcoin is native to the protocol, not an afterthought. Okay. And I'll give you an example. The tip button on Twitter is not native money. It's a stupid button that you can send a stupid invoice at the top of a profile. Nothing about that is native. Native money means that the wallet is interoperable with the protocol. Every object in the network is an opportunity for a payment. This is when it's native, right? And I'll show you, I'll give you, like I'll walk you through Zion on how it works. That to me is a complete new unlock where that an individual piece of content also becomes a mechanism for, for money to move through the, through, the, through the service. It's making money liquid. It's making content transactional in a bigger way. So that's why I set out to build Zion effectively. I said, I think something like, because I looked at myself, I was like, I think something like this will exist at some point. Will there be a social network built on money? Yes. OnlyFans tried to do it, but they did it with fiat. It's highly inefficient. By the way, that's a bigger business than Twitter. They do $4 billion a year in revenue. And they're a small company in this space, yeah. right? Like, so why isn't there a version of that for Bitcoin? Because if we know that Bitcoin is the end state of money on the internet, which it is, we all believe that, then who's going to be the first to go build that highly scalable platform for the web? And that's what I set out to do. That's kind of the, the primitive. So how is Ion built? Those three primitives, identity, messaging, and data storage, and payments. So the base layer of what we do is we use a DID as an identity layer for an individual. What that means is that we use a protocol called DidION. What it does is it takes a decentralized identifier that's like an open source spec. It takes the hash and the private key and writes it to Bitcoin's blockchain. So now your identity database is not Zion. It's the Bitcoin blockchain. Your private key that you hold on your device, that's what owns your identity. As you know very well, and most of the listeners of this podcast, you can't reverse a Bitcoin transaction, which means that you can't delete an identity off Bitcoin's blockchain. So that's how we do identity. The next piece is decentralized data and messaging. We use decentralized web nodes, which is a protocol that was built out of Block, Jack Dorsey's company, and TBD specifically. And that's how, so Zion has a decentralized web node that does all the data storage and messaging piece. And then the final piece was the money. We said we have to build a native lightning wallet to the protocol and a wallet. And I'll show you if we kind of put this up on the screen, I'll show you how the app works. The wallet is native to the experience and it's not an afterthought. It's part of the whole thing that we're doing. And I think, um, what are we saying there? Um, and I think that's what's like an interesting unlock. So it might be helpful for me to just like show it a little bit. What is that? We'll let you take over as presenter. No, just say wait. Yeah, I would say wait. Because I think you might have hit the presenter button on there. But anyway. We'll get it up. Is that helpful? Yeah, but I'm still I'm still trying to get the bigger picture of so is is this like a Bitcoin Facebook 
or a Bitcoin Twitter, or is it bigger than that? Is it bringing? It's definitely not a Bitcoin Twitter because I think Twitter is like this open graph. I think the best way to describe it, it's a mix of Instagram and Facebook groups and Telegram. I think okay. that's really what it is. So let's start off with like the wallet. So this is, we're inside the Zion app. I think what's really cool about this wallet is that it's an interoperable lightning wallet. Oh, you can't see what's on the screen. Let's see what's going on here. Is it still streaming? Let me, uh, let me try this again. Oh, it should still go. be streaming. Let's go. Okay. This, this is the first time we've tried this uh, on air. So take yeah, a second I know. here. <laughs> oh, there we go. Cool. So we're going to do this. We're going to say, um, I'm actually going to put in here Bitcoin Beach. Right, so that's going to be our invoice that we're creating. We're going to create this invoice. Let's try it again. I think the screen is uh, Beach. Oh, can't spell that. This is a fun little exercise. So we're going to copy this invoice and let's go to Cash App. We like Cash App. They're very supportive of us. We have a great relationship with that team. Paste address, allow paste. Now it sees this invoice for 24 cents. We're going to pay it. Great. And I go back to Zion. We've received that that, that fast, right? Yeah. Like this is not sped up. That to me is very cool, right? That's the first thing that like we're in El Salvador and I did that instantly. Um, now the, the main features of the app is that it all revolves around your profile and communities. Um, what's really important is that your profile is very similar to like an Instagram profile, but communities are where everything happens. So inside of a community, which I could see Bitcoin Beach having a community, um, you can do posts inside the community. So this is kind of like your Instagram feed. But then the coolest part is this like open chat. So, so explain to me a little bit the communities. People voluntarily choose to be like, I want to be in this yeah, specific like, community. Yeah, like would if, they be in multiple communities or they, would they yeah, only I mean, be in right one? Now, or? Right now I'm part of like five communities. Okay. And, and I could go to this one and say, you know what? This is a biker one. Or here, I want to be part of this first community. And what's cool about how you join a community is we have three pricing models. We have like how many sats to become a member, how much to create a post, and then the stake, which is this anti-spam feature. But I think the cool thing about a community is that it's also a full chat room, right? So the community can talk about things that are happening in the community, and then you can actually send sats to a community member. So I just send sats to this admin account from my wallet, and they just receive 10 satoshis. Um, and this is the feed. This is the aggregate of all the content inside of the communities you're a part of. If you see this, I'm just sending sats to all these people, 10 sats at a time going down the network. And I think like these are all transactions, right? That are going to these wallets. Yeah. And I think that's a very interesting unlock that we haven't seen, right? The ability of someone to post a meme and then you could boost that meme. Or someone to post something, wow, this is a this is a test for my brother. Oh, thank you so much. Like, I'm going to send him 10 sats. Or here, you know what? I'm going to put that fire emoji in and be able to engage with that piece of content. Um, you can also do paid content. This is actually quite a cool feature where I can put a paid message inside of the community. And on the other side, someone will have to pay 100 sats to see this message. They'd have to unlock that piece of content. And I think that allows for a completely new experience. And then you also have your regular feed, right? This is your regular like Instagram feed where you can post photos, you can post videos, or you could just do a text post that goes to your community. And again, if you're following individuals, um, we have search. So I think the, the thing to think about is that, like I said a little bit earlier, like money's native to the protocol. Why I think Zion is valuable is not just the fact that we do lightning and that we do all that stuff, is that we believe this will be the last platform you ever have to build on. Why do I say that? Because if other applications end up using DIDs, which is very likely that they'll use DIDs as decentralized identifiers across many different applications, 
that now becomes your interoperable login where you can take your followers, your relationships, and your contacts with you anywhere you go. But it's but only, only if those people are also on those other platforms. Is that how that would work? No, or? only if people use DIDs as the identity layers. Okay. And if they're not using their own username and password authentication. So there's a hope. And, you know, my big thing here is, truthfully, I'm betting on Jack Dorsey. Why am I betting on Jack Dorsey? Well, he's got a division of his company called TBD. TBD is building all of this infrastructure. We just happen to be the first app that's built on this stuff. So my hope is that what people are building will fall in line with this interoperable open network. And you see this being the primary place where people choose to interact. Like they, right now, most people are on several different networks. You would see this as being something that could replace all that. This would be the only place th people need to be. I, I think that at first, our goal is for, to, su to support creators in building communities, right? Like the concept of like, I have a community on this app that I can monetize and have a direct relationship to is focused for creators. So I do see us as being a place for creators very early. That's what, that's, that, that's what I would like, ideally. That'd be awesome. And where, the other thing we were talking about the other day was the ability to um, kind of gatekeep of who can interact, that there is some price that they have to pay to be able to interact so that protects you from spam. Is that yeah, so like a secondary thing or do you think that's a prime? Because for me, I'm, I'm not, I think that would be the thing I would be more interested. How do, how do I let's, let's, make it so I can interact with people that are willing, that they really value my time as much as I do? Not because I want to make money off of it, but I just want to make sure I'm not wasting my time with you know a bunch of spam. So. so I think that the way that we prevent spam in our network, and this is the problem with all decentralized open source, whatever, whatever the name is, whatever new shiny object, is that because everything is free in the network and there's no consequences, it becomes this like cesspool of riffraff because spam works because it's free. But in Zion, if you're inside of a community, which is arguably the most important real estate in the entire application, if a, we have a setting that says member stake per comment, anti-spam prevention, what that is is that when you make a comment in a community, we take that those 400 sats and we put them in a bonded wallet as a part of the community and if the administrator deletes your comment within a 24-hour period you lose that money but if your comment stays for the 24 hours you get that money right back into your wallet just like it's set like a contract and what that does is that it prevents spam because spam now has an inherent cost in order to make this post it, te it technically takes 500 sats out of your wallet for 24 hours. So it's not free to spam. You're more thoughtful about what you're writing. Why? Why are you more thoughtful about your writing? Also, there's an opportunity for people to pay you for your comment. So the proxy here is that anybody can pay anyone at any time. That doesn't really exist in traditional social networks, even in OnlyFans. OnlyFans is a single directional payment methodology. I pay you. You can never pay me, and the other people can never pay me either. But this allows anyone to pay anyone for anything at any time. Every object in the network, what I mean by object, is every post. Also, every reply. If there's a reply, like let's go to, um, like this has three, three comments. All of these comments are also boostable. So I can go to this comment and I can boost. And this is a comment on another creator's, do you see what I'm saying? Like the yeah. unlock here is like, th there's a lot of cool things that you can do here that's very unique. And would you see people using this also as their, their primary Lighting messaging wallet? app that they're messaging back and forth? I think it could be. Okay. I think it could be. I think when we launch direct messages, absolutely. I think all those things eventually can come to play. Because for me, that to have something that could be the only platform that that you had to interact with, and obviously that would be a long term thing. But to to be able to have a platform so you're not 
juggling all these, your email and your WhatsApp and all, you know, all these various, but that also had a way that it would make it costly for people to send you spam on all those different platforms for, for me, that's where I see the ability with lightning to really change the game. Absolutely. And I think like the concept of even expanding direct messaging to me is a, is an incredible unlock. Totally. So how do you guys get the uh, network effect that's necessary? I mean, that's obviously the the hardest thing for any new project. What would you see as being the My, the driver of this? I mean, you're not going to have any, you know, shitcoin token that goes along with it or anything like that. So what what is going to be so, the, the driver for people? So the way that I've thought about this and and it's important to understand, like, who's supportive of the project. So my investor base, I'll go through that. So Tony Robbins, Aubrey Marcus, Mark Moss, Robert Breedlove, Griffin Johnson, Pomp, um, Aaron Rodgers from the NFL. These are all people that have deployed capital and says, we want this to exist in the world. Thank you very much. Now, my strategy is to let them leverage their audiences and say, hey, if you want to see the stuff that I'm talking about, like, Twitter's great, but like come to Zion. That's where, because I'm not necessarily interested in like being the next Twitter, right? Like I think there's a lot of apps trying to do that. Oh, we're this open, publish everywhere, everyone sees it. That's not really what I wanna do. I wanna build a community network for communities, for people that wanna go build communities. That's the app that I wanna build, that wanna like message within communities. But I'm not really interested in the full like open social network thing. So the, like those require network effects. I just need creators to start building communities. It's a very different business. I would say that I'm closer to like a Patreon or an OnlyFans than to anything close to being Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Not even, not even close. I mean, the UX is not even the same experience. Yeah. Like it's not like you can see it. It's not Twitter. It's not Twitter. This is not Facebook. This is not, there's no like wall. You know, we're not suggesting you content. Also, we don't make money on like from ads. Like the way we make money is two ways. When you want to create a community in the app, you have to upgrade to a creator account. And you pay us $12 a month. And we let you host your own decentralized web node. And that is where you get to host your content and you get to build a community. And then we take a small bit of every transaction inside the network. But it's like fractions, fractions of what... Like OnlyFans is 20%. We're nowhere near that. And does that um, does that all accrue to the creator of the group? Or where does where do those funds go when people are paying within the depends where the payment's going? Right? Like are, am I tipping an individual or am I tipping the creator? The price per post is to the community owner because you're posting in their community. Okay. They're subsidizing the cost initially to build that community. Um but boosts go to the individual. They don't go to the creator. Maybe you're boosting the creator's post. So it depends on the authorship of the experience. That makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And you were mentioning yesterday when we were talking that, that this is kind of the second iteration of, uh -huh. of this, that you guys have an existing. Yeah, we had, we had a V1 that we launched in April of 2021 when we like, we were like the Bitcoin social network or whatever. And, um, but that version was like every user ran their own lightning node, their own lightning channel, and their own relay on top of that lightning channel. Highly inefficient. Highly inefficient. But from that, you kind of learned what people are looking for and what they want. And yeah, totally. Kind of rolled that into this. Yeah, I think like this version, like if you, the problem with that other version was like everyone had to run a node. Yeah. That means everyone had to pay to be on the network. Grew our revenue really quickly, but it just became like, not that efficient like it wasn't that cool like and you're really going to limit the the audience of you know who's going to come in yeah and level. this is like free to sign up now yeah. because it's a shared wallet it's a shared node it's a shared like instance like for you to be on the app and create an account doesn't really cost us anything but if you want to run a community you're running your own node that becomes more complicated yeah. and i'm assuming it's a custodial wallet we call it I, yes, and semi-custodial. So this, in, in the sense of when you create your private key for your account to log in, we have no access to those private keys. So we cannot like get the, like the 12 words you use to sign up, we can't 
we can't access that. Yeah. We can't access those identities, the content or the funds. So yes, it's custodial because but I mean, the actual, the actual lightning part of that, that would custo- be, yeah, be like the light, Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, look, I was talking about this with um, a friend earlier today. Any lightning app that's telling you they're non-custodial, I think is, unless, unless that app is running your own node and all your own channels and all your own liquidity, yeah. it is custodial. Because the only way to be non-custodial is running your own node, and running your own channels. And if anyone's telling you otherwise, is they're dancing around this nonsense. Yeah. They're fucking- no, and, I, and I have no no issue with custodial wallet. I mean, I just think it's just important for people to know, um, you know, what, what they're dealing with and, and to make but, decisions but, for security yeah, based on that. Yeah, but so. yeah, but also Zion's wallet is capped at 100,000 sats, $17. Okay. Right, like this so, is- So they're not holding you, any significant you're, funds. You're not the, hold, like okay. we don't want you to put yeah, any- yeah, yeah more than $17 worth of Bitcoin in here, 100,000 sats. This is for you to buy content yeah. and buy some coffees here and there, right? But I think the thing that like, what's really important is to unlock here. This is like the, the thing that everyone should understand why this is a crazy concept. You can post a photo in this community, for example, right? Like I can go and I'll post a, I'll post a photo of you, right? For example, right across <laughs> the table from me, right? I will use this photo and I'm going to post this in the community. Now, anybody can go in this community and send me sats for whatever that piece of content was. And then I can go instantly into my lightning wall in the same application, press send, open the camera, scan a lightning invoice, and now pay for a coffee. That to me, is a really fucking cool experience. That's an unlock, like, look, I just paid 50 sats to that pickleball community admin to post that piece of content. They can go use that 50 sats instantly to go buy something inside the same experience, not an afterthought, like not tip me using this thing and then I can send all, like, no, it's the same app. I haven't left this single user experience. And I think that's an amazing concept, right? Because what it unlocks is that imagine you're in a community and someone writes a post like, I'm having a really tough time. There's th- this is going on in my life. I would really like appreciate some support. Yeah. And then everyone sends them a thousand sats, right? Like just like this is a very real possible scenario in this application. And then they can use that instantly. That to me is an incredible community unlock. So-and-so is having a hard time. This is where their wallet is directed. This is an invoice to this person. Yeah. See what I'm saying? No, I mean, we already see some of that happening, you know, on Twitter and, and other places. But if it's just integrated, like how how it's set up with Zion, obviously that makes it so much easier. Yeah. It's less steps, less friction, more likely to happen. So, And, and, I, and I would, what I would have been really cool at some point was like if we had two phones and you could post an unlock photo and I could show you like, hey, this is what an unlock, like this is what I see if yeah. you do a paid photo, this is what it looks like to me. I can't do it because I'm not. We no, don't no, have but yeah, I, I get, I get the concept, and yeah. that's, obviously, there's a lot of different things, you know, directions you could take that, and if, you know, if each person has to unlock it, or if hey, once ten people pay, then it's unlocked for everybody, or yeah, there's you know, all, all kinds this stuff. Of different. Like, I think, it's, I think it's really cool to think about this like concept of like is like having digital like native money to a protocol. I think it's like really cool. And like, to me, I think in the end state, you know, you talked about convincing you per se, like I at some point believed that something like this would exist in the future. I just didn't see it available. So I just went and built it myself. Do I think we're going to win? I don't know. We're more likely to fail than anything. Like I tell this to people all the time, like this concept is fucking out there and we're very likely to fail, but at least we're trying something new and it's the ethos of Bitcoin all the way through. No, and I, I think something like what you're talking about, you know, obviously for your guys' sake, I hope it's Zion, but obviously something like that will be the future because it has so many advantages. And I could see, 
it not, and I'm, I guess I'm understanding a little bit more now, it probably wouldn't replace other apps, but it would be maybe a, a tighter knit group where maybe you spend more of your time and you, you go deeper with people than, you know, Twitter where you're just battling and, you know, going back and forth with random strangers. This would be my, kind of more of a tighter community. My, my feeling is that people want to build and they want to be a part of communities yeah. and tribes. Like what you've done here, Bitcoin Beach to me is like a community. And I, the first question I asked you was like, where is like the community held? Like where's the container that this community is held in? And I think there should be a digital place tied to a digital wallet that a community is held in. And it makes sense to be on a mobile yeah. phone. And it makes sense that like it's built on Bitcoin. Like, Well, I think too, it makes sense to have it be a smaller more cohesive group because it's hard to do it on twitter because you have so many people sending you random questions and random things but if it's a specific community that people are choosing to be a part of that are paying some sats to be a part of I, it just seems like it'd be more natural for you to want to interact with them to respond to them look twitter is twitter and most social social networks are like this town square or right? they're like twitter is the town square or whatever i don't that's not what I'm building. I'm building the neighborhood, the houses in that neighborhood and the cul-de-sac and your friend's house that you want to go to that you really like, like in your friends. Yeah. With. I'm building that version for a digital experience because that's why money is really important is when they're in these niche kind of communities. And I unpack, I, I just made up that analogy, by the way, I didn't something like, like I literally just came up with it in my head, but like, that's not what I'm like. This is not supposed to be like post to a billion people at one time. This is like, if I'm going for communities, this is where I want to go. And cause I like, I don't, I think that the, the use case of the town square thing is definitely obvious. Twitter's obvious thing, but I think people in this new world were fraction, like our attention is fractionalized so many places. We're yearning community. Yeah. Like we're fully yearning community. Like it's, and we want to be closer to other people and we need apps that bring us closer, not put us further away. Now, I mean, that's why more... people want to come to Bitcoin conferences. It's it's usually not for the speakers or the other things. I mean, that's the excuse to gather together. But the real reason is they want to be together with other like minded people to have real conversations. With totally, them. totally. And I think it's like it's this inherent like digital tribalism. It's like, cool, like this is a place where we can go build a digital tribe. And I think like there's a book by Balaji Servaisen Sur called The Network State. And I do believe like that's how you build a network state is like first you build a community with a native cryptocurrency. You build rules, you build ideals, you build values into that set. And our native cryptocurrency happens to be Bitcoin. And then from there, you can crowdsource territory and build your own city. You guys have like gone two steps ahead with that and kind of building <laughs> El Zonte over here. But I like, I, I think that's like, if I'm looking at the end state of our business, Zion's like a payment processor for the creator economy. And the creator economy is massive. Like it's a massive thing. It's like people post content on the other and people want to watch it. And I think people's value, like the other thing that we're like very clear that's broken is that advertising is how these big social networks get subsidized. Like that's like, they have to make money in yeah. some capacity. And like when I look at a lot of these new projects that are coming out, I always look at the end state. I'm like, okay, cool, bro. You got this app. It's got 10,000 downloads. Like, and you got donations from people. Fine. How is this going to sustain itself? Like, like you got to build a business. Like, it's like these people. And this is my frustration in Bitcoin a lot. Like a bunch of people are building projects, but no one's building companies. These are all projects running around. Like they're not like real fundamental, like financial institution based businesses. The question is, how do you make money? How do you make this a sustaining long term revenue generating opportunity? That's why when we went out the gate, we're like, look, Zion isn't free. If you want to build communities, you got to pay money for that. Where it's like, we're not trying to build this thing as like, let's get all and then we'll figure out how to make money after and, yeah. and sell your attention. It's very clear from day one. You want to build a community on this app and that's like maybe it's hindered our growth a little bit but at least i was true to myself i was like i'm not going to fuck you and tell you i'm going to build an advertising business later or i'm not going to subsidize this cause for this remittance transaction 
And then in the end, fuck you in two years when I beat out all the competitors, be this loss leader. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest and upfront. And I think that's a problem with a lot of like, I think the companies in the space is that they're not being very transparent of how they're eventually going to make money. Like, at least I've been very upfront. Like, hey, this is it. Well, I think even that's changing in the current environment for, for raising funds. I mean, if for Thank a while, God. they would throw money at anybody and, and growth was, was all important. But yeah. it seems like now they want to know, okay, how are you going to make money? Maybe not right away, but not too long. And I think like people should start asking these questions. I mean, my background, like when I built my first business, we were profitable within six weeks. And then we were just like, making a lot of cash flow. And as of February 1st, I'm proud to say Zion will be a profitable organization with engineering and everything built in because of our revenue model, the way we balance treasury funds. Like we will be a profitable company in the Bitcoin space, growing at a very rapid rate. Unheard of, unheard of. But it's because I believed in the ethos from day one of saying, look, I want to create value, but I also want to be a long-term sustaining company. And I want to like, live. I want to, I want to survive. And I don't want to survive on the back of investors yeah. praying for my future net cash flow. I want to just be a self-sustaining cash flow positive machine. And I think it's unheard of. It's unheard of in this space because when there's like the risk-free rate is essentially zero, money's just thrown around and there's just such a f group of fucked up operators out there that have no business running companies. And I think Bitcoin helps that a bit. Um, I think we have a long way to go, though. I think there's a lot of nonsense also in Bitcoin. I will say that. Like, I think that there's a lot of a lot of profundity in this in this space that like, you know, people pontificate about how they're building the future. And, you know, maybe they're not actually doing that. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's fair. I mean, but I think anytime there's something new, you have to have that to some degree because there'll be people that are wrong and there'll be people that, you know, everybody thought was wrong that will actually surprise. So I totally. Think it's I think, but we do have to find that balance. And I think when it gets, when it goes to the extreme where nobody's even worried about how they'll ever make money, because that's, I've, I've been a small business owner all my life. And so that's how my mind works. So I'm always like, how, how are you going to make money off this? There's no, oh no, we'll figure that out later. And that, that's never really sat right for me. So. Look, there's only been a few business, like if you look at the data, all the best businesses never really did that. Like if you look at the data of Facebook, Facebook within like, I think it was the first few years, like they were making tons of cash. Like they didn't wait for ads. They brought ads very early. Google, same thing. It's not like Google is free for yeah. like, like all the best companies find a way to make money very early, not very, very late. Like it's, it's often not the very late ones that actually make it. Um, so I think that's another thing that, you know, hopefully being a Bitcoin native business, um, that also ethos permeates, uh, per, per, permeates, I think, is that the word? Sorry. Permeates? Permeates. Permeate? No, that's not no. the word. <laughs> What's the I, word? I know what you're going after, but I... Yeah, permeates. permeates. Yes, Let's go. It. Thank you, Andy. Andy, thank you. So how Andy. do you how do you see this as being something that can help El Salvador? Like, what is your vision of why something like Zion would be important and, and who... Is this for the general population or do you so, see this for? I mean, it's interesting because I can't like share much of like what my meetings were this week. But one of the things that was kind of unpacked was that like, you know, people want digital identity and they, they want digital identity that's tied to a wallet. And what is Zion, right? You have a profile. And if I actually like copy my profile, and I go to my notes app real quick and I just want to show you when I paste my, when I paste this profile here, you're good. You could keep it where it was. What you see at the bottom here is did ion, right? Uh -huh. That is your digital ID that's secured by the Bitcoin blockchain. And that digital ID is tied to a digital wallet, which happens to be a lightning wallet. The cool thing about dids is that you can apply verifiable credentials to DIDs, which are basically like they could be implemented by a government. They could say, oh, this person is this person and this is their credit, whatever. Like you can apply these, these methodologies to these digital IDs, but the consumer owns, not the government. And I think for a place like El Salvador, to me, the opportunity is that you have so many people that don't have identification and then also don't have a bank.
Yeah. And all of a sudden, they can download an application on the App Store, get a digital ID, the government can apply a verifiable credential to them, they have a bank account, they can just say, hey, that costs 2,500 Satoshis. They create that invoice, and on the other side, someone can hit scan, scan that invoice, and you're good to go. I think that to me is an unlock that I didn't, like you don't, in the US, you don't need, nobody needs that. But you come to a place like this and you hear that from someone that's a, like very seriously running the government yeah. and you're like, whoa, like that's a no brainer. Let's like roll this out to the entire country and support them and like let them have something. Because for us, like it doesn't cost us anything to do that. And that might actually help this place. Well, even when they did, when you know, when they first launched the the Chiva wallet, they they gave everybody thirty dollars worth of Sats, but that was really limited by if people didn't have a national ID, they couldn't qualify. But the even bigger problem was people stealing other people's IDs because they're not really protected here. You use them everywhere, so they would just grab their numbers and set up a wallet in their name. And so, having something where there you have a private key that somebody owns and it's not readily visible for people. I mean, I think that cost them tens of millions of dollars, just, just that and the fraud and that one little program. Yeah, and I think like the way that I, if I was rolling out that program here, this is how I would do it. I said, first of all, you sign your DID in. Second thing you do is you assign a verifiable credential to an individual to that DID. And that did is tied to the wall and that's the only one that gets the thing. And now, all the interactions that you make is not tied to a wallet address. It's tied to an identity and a social profile, right? Because I, I, the last part of this is that that thing at the top is a social handle. It's at Justin Resvani. So now when someone wants to search or my content's being posted, I have a social reputation tied to a digital identity added to a digital wallet. So am I going to make, am I, am I going to go make 20 different Justin Resvani's? No, because there's social proof in the experience as well. So it unlocks a whole new like mechanism. Like I could see, like, I think, I don't think the future is like, you just have a wallet and that's all it does is pay for Like this to me is very, it's a dumb thing that you just one thing that just does that to me, that's stupid. Why, why do you just need that when you can have that and everything else tied into one? It's, I think like when you talk about like, Elon, right? The fucking best entrepreneur of our generation. I think this is what he's trying to build with X.com. He wants to build an app that has a native crypto, native currency that you can do a bunch of stuff in there. We're just, the first thing I'm doing is social communities. Yeah. But what else can I do, right? Like let's, let's break down primitives again. What did I say are broken on the web? Identity, messaging and data storage and money. If you take two out of those three primitives, you can build 99% of the apps on the Apple or Google app stores. If you have login and messaging, you could build almost 50%. If you have login and money, you can build almost anything else. If you have login and data storage, you can build every game. So if you can build those primitives, which I have in here, which are interoperable, I can build almost any app. So eventually Zion will have its own app stores. Eventually, you can have other apps tied to this experience because of Lightning and Bitcoin. That's what makes this all possible. Okay, I think uh, when it's out, I, I will I will at least download it and uh, play around with it, uh, which is a big step for me because I'm I hate doing anything new at this point because I'm already overloaded. Do so. it for Bitcoin. Don't so. do it for you. No, I mean just the idea of having the uh, Bitcoin Beach community because it. It is. I feel like if there was something that was more intimate, it would be more easy to interact and go back and forth. And that's that's where we've kind of struggled. There's lots of people that want to help, want to do different things, but it's it's like a message here and then you kind of lose contact. And But to have something where you're just all together in a community where that's all the focus is, I, I think it would help the momentum for things sustain and not of get course. lost in the and noise. And then people be like, oh, that's a cool idea. Like, hey, I want to let me help with yeah. that or whatever. Like. I think that would be cool. Like, and I would would love to support you in that. Like, yeah. so I first said I was like, I think this place should have one of these like chat rooms. Yeah. Um. So when when is it when is it coming out and it's what? done? I mean, as you can see, it's done. I think that 
I think in the next but couple can of people, days. Can people download it yet? Or probably by the time this, this comes out next when week? When is this coming out next week? Uh, yeah, probably next week. Um, I hope so. I mean, tomorrow morning I'm finishing final review and I want to submit to the Apple app okay. store and like get this thing out. Like we're just updating. We've had an app out there for over two years. We're just doing this update and hopefully like it'll be easy and yeah. they'll say yes. We don't and that, know. That's it's just a, Zion. They just search for Zion. And Zion, create openly or go to. So I, what I would do is that even if it's not out, Zion.fyi is our domain. There either will be a link to the wait list or there'll be a link to download this app here. Those are the two things that are options. Awesome. What else? Where else can people follow you or what else? Yeah, do you I want mean, to, uh... yeah, I'm on all the social platforms as my full name, Justin Resvani. Um, and I'm pretty active on stuff like my Instagram is more active than probably my Twitter. Um, I'm also verified on everything, so I'll never like DM you for financial <laughs> advice. I mean, it's a joke. I say, like, how are your trades <laughs> yes, going? Yes, or like, yes. I don't know. Like, I'll, I don't I would never ask you about trading advice or anything like that. My but you, my uh, my fake Instagram account has more followers than than I have on because I don't really use Instagram. So that really is a problem because people are like, no, but it has the one with the more followers. I'm like, no, I've reported that thing like 10 times. You got to so. get you got to get verified. Yeah. Get you verified on Instagram. I mean, that was to me like the verified thing on Instagram was like, if any, if you're, I don't have a private account on Instagram. I have one, it's verified. Like at least like Instagram doesn't toss out verifications like it's candy. Yeah. Um, oh, other cool thing is like, we do orange check boxes instead of blue. So um, yeah, and this is a, a photo off my website. Thank you for that little brutalism design of like, thanks for doing this, man. I'm like, I'm stoked to come and hang out here like longer. Not an in and out trip, like yeah. come and stay. But like maybe I'll come. I mean, Bo was saying come back in November. I might come back for like a month in November. Well, we've been batting around the idea of we we do have kind of a shared workspace that people can work at in Hope House, but we're we're batting around the idea of building something even like bigger and more substantial because I think El Salvador is just a great place for people to network and to interact with people because there's so many people coming through and working on interesting projects and they're looking for you know, the infrastructure to do that, you know, podcast space and, and private offices, that kind of stuff. So we're, we're batting around a lot of those ideas right now, just because we've seen so much interest. Bang, bang, man. Yeah. Love that. So hopefully by the next time you come down, we'll have, uh, yeah, we'll have uh, even more facilities. I appreciate you uh, doing this and having me and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we will get that Bitcoin beach community up and running and, uh, We'll see. We'll see where we can take it. Thank you, brother. All right. Thanks.